So to start off, I say technology is a gift. We need to use it wisely. We go back to first industrial revolution, way back in 1765. And that was the time when it started off with steam. Coal was being mined. Coal was available in abundance. And the power was generated out of heating water, generating steam. And you had steam engines, which were essentially external combustion engines. Now this was, and you had tremendous amount of power generated to haul large amount of loads over long distances. That was how technology started in 1765. It's not that it start; it happened in that one year that the period was responsible for steam being used as power. Along with that, you had cotton gin, you had spinning jenny, and you also had telegraph during that period. Now, we had to wait 100 years after that for Industrial Revolution 2.0. And that was in 1870. And what happened? We changed from using steam for power to using gas for power and using fossil fuels for generating power. And the work was essentially still the same. Now, <clears throat> this was the internal combustion engines. So there was a shift in technology from external combustion to internal combustion. And that is how the second revolution started. This period also saw electricity. It also saw the light bulb. And all these technologies have made profound impact on our lives. And you know, several of the technological advancements that have happened during that period had societal impact. They had economic impact on every one of them. And the technologies touched every one of them. That was the second revolution. As we move into the third revolution, which again ha happened after 100 years, and that was 1969. And that time, we had communications. We had telecommunications. There was a great amount of technology shift that happened because of communications. Advances that were made in terms of distances traveled in terms of the, uh, the uh, communication in terms of the uh, images, the data, and things like that. So that was 1969. And you had, again, a profound impact on the people because of the technology that happened at that time. Now, you will find that it needed almost 100 years to make these changes. But from that period on, 1970 on, the entire development cycle shrunk. And we had much more profound developments happening within 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, 3 years. Today, you have a tech shelf life for technology, which is hardly 3 to 5 years, not even 5 years. Technology changes. And you need to learn, unlearn, relearn, and things like that. So in 1980, to be, to be a little more expressive on this, in 1980, you had the in, in uh, you, you had a digital revolution, you know, and also a green revolution during that time. We have we were from a agriculture you know, importing country, we became an agriculture exporting country. Having said all that, in 1980, we had World Wide Web. And in 1990, you know, we had smartphones. And in 2000, 2010, beyond internet and things like that. 
Now here I would want to show you one idea which originated much before the industrial revolutions. This was a moving plate printing press which started off the printing revolution. And what was the printing revolution? Until that time, the Bible essentially was confined to the churches. And the hymns and the prayers were with the elite. What the printing press, was, press did was to get the Bible printed and it reached the commoners' homes. So, the, no longer the hymns and the prayers remained in the churches, but they came into the commoners' home. It didn't stop people from going to church. It didn't stop people from reading the hymns or listening to the hymns and so on. But what it did is, it expanded the realm of God and the realm of godliness. Now, that is, that's what is profound in that term. What followed was, the digital revolution around the 1980s and again there was a very very profound impact of digital revolution during that time in the early six, uh, in the late 60s and 70s and eight, early 80s we had the mainframes which had massive power at their disposal nothing compared to even your smartphone today but they had massive power at that point of time and several applications were developed on the mainframes and that also helped promote the application based progress. Now, once that was done, you had new languages being developed over a period of time. You had Visual Basic, you had Visual Pascal that followed the uh, or the uh, rapid application development tools followed that process and the entire application development became extremely simple and with that new ideas came about of uh, processing of uh, government working and so on so you had workflow applications you had you know process based applications which were developed using rapid application development tools Subsequent to that, you had a lot of development in terms of new technologies which helped the growth of the society, growth of the, uh, the processes that people were using. When this was happening, this, this changed the entire way of working within the industry, it changed the way of working within the uh, you know, private uh, place or the public space or whatever existed at that point of time. Subsequent to that, we there was a lot of development in the, you know, uh, there was a lot of development within the new applications which gave rise to new technologies. Like I said, the beyond internet was something that was absolutely you know uh, defining moment for technology and its use there was a lot of breakthrough that happened during that time in artificial intelligence space did you know that the first chatbot ai based chatbot was developed in MIT by Professor Joseph which was developed in 1964 and it was called ELISA and it was a conversational style chatbot which you see today and this was way back in 1964 and the first definition for artificial intelligence originated in 1950 so it has a 60 year history and what we are seeing today is, is a manifestation which has taken place over that period. So, this was the first chatbot which actually this was used for you know uh, people in the defense sector to 
start a conversation with the people who were uh, who were prisoners during the wars. Now it has this this entire space has impacted healthcare, it has impacted manufacturing, finance, entertainment, you name the sector, and AI has impacted that sector. And the algorithms which started off for predictive analysis were based in the machine learning language. Now all this situation, it has also changed the labor dynamics. There, are, there were certain entry level jobs which were, which vanished because of automation and intelligent agents at the entry level. So people had to learn, re unlearn, relearn and so on. So there was a lot of labor dynamics that was happening at that time which is still happening. We will come to that. There were also issues of security, privacy of data and so on. So therefore new technologies came up to explicitly define what security requirements were needed with the changing technology. I will give you an example here, the, the, one of the, uh, some of the students had said what kind of startups should be there and what kind of, you know, uh, how does that turn into a unicorn. Now the digital space that I have described has several options for you and one of the examples I am citing here because it works with the digital space that we are talking about which is a technological innovation that has happened. Airbnb, most of you must be knowing, two guys from college students at that time, Joe Gaba and Brian were students in the design school of Rhode Island and they were broke, they did not have money to even pay their rent. So what they did, there was a conference that was happening in the vicinity and they rent out, rented out their bed, mattress and they supplied breakfast to the participants in the conference. And this they did on by building a website to give this service and they called it airbed breakfast.com and that is how Airbnb came about and over a period of time it started gathering strength, it started working and then uh, you know the story, today it's a, it has a, a, you know gone beyond or gone above the combined valuation of uh, yeah, Windham and Hilton, at, it stands at 89 billion dollars today and it has even gone past Marriott which is still at 66 billion dollars. So that is how startups happen. Now what is success? It is just you, you have to keep your eyes open, your ears open and look for opportunities and above all do, we, do a market survey that helps you understand the markets. Without market survey no startup would ever work. So whether it is innovative disruption or disruptive innovation, you need to make the change in the, in the sector that you are looking at without which your success would be questioned. Subsequently, this technology evolved, it got into quantum computing, today it is it's, it's the quantum computing era, probably in two years time you will find a quantum computer with you. What is it? In, a, in classical computing you have bits. 0 and 1 and they have definite states. Whereas in com quantum computing the qubits, they are called qubits and they can have multiple states and that multiple state is created by, by a property called superposition and then entanglement describes the how they are related and this whole thing works on a probability theory. Now this gives you tremendous opportunities to you know, uh, for uh, computing, solving complex problems and so on. So industry 4.0 evolved, it is a combination of several 
technologies. For example, your, uh, your 5G, your IoT, your DevOps, you name it, AI, ML, they're all there in Industry 4.0. At one time, the machines could do, it to, could take a lot of programming, but now a machine can programming, program another machine, look for maintenance aspects, look for you know, uh, self-correcting measures, and so on. So the whole technology goes towards running a completely autonomous setup. That's the fourth revolution. Finally, in the industry 5.0, there is a, you know, uh, all this time in the first revolution, in the second revolution, it was all profit. Industry was looking at profit. Subsequently, people thought profit is not the only thing that should be seen. People who create that profit must be uh, also looked at. So therefore, the second P appears, people. The first P is profit. And now, since all the material that you use to produce comes from the planet Earth, the third P must be planet. So you look. So now the entire manufacturing cycle will be re-looked at, redefined from the perspective of how to preserve the planet. So that's the three P bottom line. There is also gig economy. The uh, entire IT industry is probably transforming. Today, the ITES sector, enabled services sector, would probably turn gig, which means that I'm good at uh, you know uh, Python, so I have a problem to solve for the industry. I do that, and I get my money. Gig, gig is a temporary working where I give some service and I get some money. For example, you're, you you uh, ask for some uh, you know uh, thing to be uh, delivered at your home. There's a Zomato guy who gets your uh, food. So that's a gig working and if I participate in that, it's a gig economy. The same thing will happen in probably uh, enabled services sector. Finally, I have this which is interesting in the sense that the classical pyramid-like structure for employment is being disrupted. The base of the pyramid is shrinking Earlier, you had number of jobs at the base of the pyramid. And as you go up, higher order skills and lesser number of jobs, that is being disturbed today, disrupted. The base is shrinking, which means that at the base level, you need more skills, higher order skills, but less number of jobs. So it's becoming a pipe-like structure because of automation, because of the developments that have been taking place. So therefore, the only Functionally, you need to learn, unlearn, relearn, skill, upskill, and so on. Thank you. Namaskar.